Language conveys meanings and allows the sharing of information, ideas and perspectives. When successfully understood, written communication through reading can be a transformative and enjoyable experience. It has the power to take the mind to different places, times and events. It takes us out of the prison of the present. For many children, however, the messages conveyed in written communication may be less well understood. This has potentially far extending consequences for their learning, development and well-being in school, though also in later life, overall. The richness of written language and the multiplicity of interpretations generated by it can be shown in this following example. Jenny sprang bow upright. Moments of disorientation followed before she recognised the now faded floral wallpaper and tatty matching curtains. Framed family faces stared down from the bookshelf. Home for the holiday, she remembered. Blinking and yawning, she stumbled around for her slippers and gown. A tinny voice from the bedside table was delivering the news and warning of harsh winds and icy roads. Jenny reached across and hit the button. Today is definitely a two-sweater day, Jenny thought, as she rifled around in her suitcase for her favourite winter clothing. In reflecting on our understanding of the passage, both young and old, we can consider the following questions. For example, why did Jenny spring bolt upright? Where was Jenny? Why might she have felt disorientated? Where was the tinny voice coming from? And what was the button? Now let's read the passage again. If we consider the experience of trying to decipher its meaning, we may be able to document some of the initial reflections that we might have had when we reread the passage. Complexity of comprehension is highlighted in these annotations. Jenny sprang bolt upright, so maybe Jenny is surprised and shocked or has woken up suddenly. Something has caught her attention. Moments of disorientation followed. The next phrase, she may be feeling confused, she could be somewhere unfamiliar. And before she recognised the now faded flat floral wallpaper and tatty matching curtains, suggests that they were once in good condition, now they look worn and they may be less recognisable. Framed family faces. The only faces that we can think of or I can think of are in frames and they're in photographs or in paintings and these may be images of Jenny's family. The phrase stared down from the bookshelf is not literal, it's unlikely to be real faces in frames. And home, the use of the noun further suggests that the family faces are from her family or the holiday she remembered. The feeling of disorientation coupled with the thought that she is there for the holiday suggests that this is not her everyday home. Blinking and yawning suggests that she's just woken up of course, and she stumbled around suggesting she's feeling disorientated or slightly sleepy, which causes her to be less coordinated when trying to find these items, that is her slippers and gown, presumably a dressing gown rather than a ball gown or a graduation gown. The tinny voice from the bedside table is again not literal, perhaps, probably. T tables are inanimate, so they do not have the mechanisms for conveying sound, so it must be something from the table. And then the phrase delivering the news or warning of past winds and icy roads suggests that it's being transmitted rather than a real voice. And typically that might be a radio or a telephone or a television. And radios are often a part of alarm clocks, of course, so they're used to wake people up. And then Jenny reached across and hit the button. So buttons are usually hit on machines rather than clothing. And of course that's a further cue for us to think of alarm clocks. Finally, today is a definitely a two sweater day, she says. So sweaters are an item of clothing, of course. Two of these would be warmer than one. And this suggests that she's going to wear two because of the cold weather mentioned in this news report. And this perhaps tells us something about her character. And then finally, again, Jenny thought as she rifled. Rifle as a verb means to search. This is likely the more in likely of interpretations than the noun rifle, which is a gun. And in her suitcase for her favourite winter clothing, as it is cold and she is looking for the winter clothes, it suggests that the holiday, that she is home in the winter rather than any other time. So this may be Christmas or New Year. Taken as an individual exercise or a classroom activity, this kind of conscious so-called thinking aloud focuses on attention to the aspects of reading comprehension that otherwise might go unnoticed. 
In the example, our understanding of the text message gradually builds up over the course of reading it. Initial predictions are confirmed by later information. Potentially ambiguous vocabulary is resolved by the context, and assumptions based on previous experience are tested. These kinds of annotations, however, only make a surface scratch in the demands of reading comprehension. Some of them are clarifying, or possibly overdoing it, straying into the pedantic. But making connections between parts of the passage so as to build up an interpretation requires recognition of the words, both their connotation and their stricter dictionary definition, their denotation, an ability to hold information in mind, an ability to look backwards and forwards to relevant words and phrases, and understanding of cues from sentence structure and punctuation, and perhaps an empathy with the character and many other skills and processes. Reading comprehension might, as the above suggests, necessarily follow from asking the questions that the person and group doing the work of reading for meaning might want to ask. So, one part of the task of reading comprehension is located within the text itself. However, a developed understanding comes from the interaction between the text and the reader's response to it. And if you're interested in this line of thinking, consider looking up the work of Louise Rosenblatt and those writers who have carried on the torch of reader response theory, like Wolfgang Eiser. In classroom settings, more social settings, however, the diverse perspectives that come to the task result in different interpretations of a text. Although this is only a relatively straightforward example, we may still find that when we discuss reading material with others, we may have interpreted the same sentence in very different ways. We may also find that our interpretations are inconsistent with the message that was intended by the author. Such differences in imagination and personal response, whilst difficult and complex to capture, are what reading comprehension experiences are all about.